So for the first question, we're going to just have a look at a few of the values in the sequence. We know that A1 is 1, A2 is double that, A3 is double A2, and so on. And over here, it's pretty easy to recognize a pattern like these are just powers of 2. So we're dealing with 0, 2, 1, 2 squared, 2 cubed, and so on. So we can hypothesize that in general, an is equal to 2 to the n minus 1. So how do we prove this? By induction, looking at the base case, we know that according to this formula, a1 would have to be equal to 1 minus 1, which is 1. And that holds because we know that's true. So then assuming that it's true for ak being equal to 2 to the k minus 1, we know that that implies from this formula over here that ak plus 1 is double ak, which is equal to 2 times 2 to the k minus 1, which is 2 to the k, which we can also write as 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1, in which case it fits in with this formula over here. And we're proving this fact by induction. For the second question, we can again look at values of b. So we're given that b1 is equal to 3, b2 is double that plus 1, so that gives us 7, b3 is double that, so that's 14 plus 1, b4 is 30 plus 1, and if we add 1 to all of these values, we would get 4, 8, 16, 32, which are pretty easy to recognize as powers of 2. So we can also write this as 2 squared minus 1, 2 cubed minus 1, 2 to the 4 minus 1, and so on, which gives us the hypothesis that in general, bn is equal to 2 to the n plus 1 minus 1. So for the base case, b1 is equal to 2 squared minus 1, which is equal to 3. Yes, we have that from here. If we assume that in general bk is equal to 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1, then that implies that bk plus 1, using the recurrence, is equal to 2 times bk plus 1, which is equal to 2 times 2 to the k plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2 to the k plus 2 minus 2 plus 1, which is 2 to the oops, uh, k plus 1 plus 1 minus 1, which satisfies this equation and shows that the induction is correct. For the third part, we can again look at the patterns. C1 is equal to 2, and then B2 is 5 times that minus 4, which gives us 6. C3 is 5 times that minus 4, which gives us 26, and so on. And if we subtract 1 from these, we see that we get powers of 5. So this is 5 to the 0 plus 1. One plus one, and so on. So we hypothesize that in general, Cn is equal to five to the n minus one plus one. So if you look at the base case, C1 would then be five to the one minus one plus one, which is five to the zero, which is equal to two, and that works. And then assuming that Ck is equal to five to the k minus one. 1. That implies that, using the recurrence, ck plus 1 is equal to 5 times ck minus 4, which is equal to 5 times 5 to the k minus 1 plus 1 minus 4, which is equal to 5 to the k plus 5 minus 4 is just plus 1. We can rewrite this as 5 to the k plus 1 minus 1 
plus one. So that matches this form over here, thereby proving that four is a one induction. So for problem four, it's a little more complicated. We can start looking at the pattern by saying d1 equals 2, and then d2 is equal to 3 times that plus 4, which gives us 10, and d3 is equal to 3 times that plus 4, which is 10. But there, there isn't any super obvious pattern to this. However, looking at the previous questions, we can see that the solution is generally in the form of some power of a multiplier and an offset. So suppose we hypothesize that in general, dn is equal to some constant times 3 to the n plus another constant. Then in order to satisfy the base case, um, we would have to have that d1, which is equal to a times 3 plus b is equal to 2. So that's one equation. And then in order to satisfy the inductive hypothesis, if we know that dk is equal to a times 3 to the k plus b, then by the recursion, dk plus 1 is implied to be 3 times dk plus 4, which is equal to 3 times a times 3 to the k plus b plus 4, which is equal to a times 3 to the k plus 1 plus 3b plus 4. But in order for this general hypothesis to work, we would also need dk plus 1 to be equal to a times 3 to the k plus 1 plus b. So these two things would have to be equal to each other. In other words, a times 3 to the k plus 1 plus 3b plus 4 is equal to a times 3 to the k plus 1 plus b. And obviously, these terms cancel out. So you're left with 2b is equal to negative 4, which means that b equals negative 2. OK, so we have that um, we hypothesize that dn equals a times 3 to the n plus b. And the base case gives us that d1, which is a times 3 plus b is equal to 2. And we just worked out that b is equal to negative 2. So if we plug that into this equation, we get that 3a minus 2 equals 2, which implies 3a equals 4. Therefore, a is equal to 4 over 3. So this equation becomes 4 over 3 times 3 to the n minus 2. And if we try and prove by induction, we see that indeed d1, according to that, is equal to 4 over 3 times 3 minus 2, which is 4 minus 2, which is equal to 2. So that works. And then assuming that for the case dk, we have it's equal to 4 over 3 times 3 to the k minus 2. Then dk plus 1 is equal to 3 times dk plus 4, which is equal to 3 times 4 over 3 times 3 to the k minus 2. 4, which simplifies to 4 over 3 times 3 to the k plus 1 minus 6 plus 4, which is equal to 4 over 3 times 3 to the k 
a plus 1 minus 2. And we see that that matches up with the general case. And so by induction, this formula is true. OK, so for number 5, again, we can see that this is going to be kind of hairy because we have e1 equals 100, and then e2 is 23 times that, so 2300 plus 13, and so on. And um, there's no really obvious formula for this. So we're just going to go straight to the idea that, in general, en is some coefficient times the power of 23 plus an offset since we're multiplying by 23 at each step. So this gives us the base case that E1 is equal to A times 23 plus B, and that has to be equal to 100. And then for the inductive step, if we know that Ek is equal to A times 23 to the K plus B, then using the recurrent Recurrence that implies that ek plus 1 is equal to 23 times ek plus 13, which is equal to 23 times a times 23 to the k plus b plus 13, which is equal to a times 23 to the k plus 1 plus 23b plus 13. But then, if we assume that this formula is true, then ek plus 1 must also be a times 23 to the k plus 1 plus b. So for these two things to be equal, the a to the 23 a times 23 to the k plus 1 must cancel out, and we must have that 23b plus 13 is equal to b, which gives us 22b equals minus 13, and b must be equal to negative 13 over 22. Now if we plug that back into e1, we get that 23a plus b, which is minus 13 over 22, is equal to 100. Therefore, a is equal to 100 plus 13 over 22, all divided by 23. try to um, solve this, prove this using induction, we see that um, for the base case, E1 is equal to A times 23 plus B, which is just 100 plus 13 over 22, which is negative b minus 13 over 22. So the base case obviously works. And for the inductive case, remember that a is 100 plus 13 over 22 divided by 23. is equal to negative 13 over 22. So we hypothesize that in general en is equal to a times 23 to the n plus b. So given the inductive hypothesis that k is equal to a times 23 to the k, B, 
then that implies that mean k plus 1 is equal to 23 times mean k plus 13, which is equal to 23 times, 8 times 23 to the k plus b, close bracket, plus 13, which is equal to a times 23 to the k plus 1 plus 23b plus 13, which is equal to a times 23 to the k plus 1. And since b is negative 13 over 22, this is um, minus 13 over 22 times 23 plus 13, which is equal to a times 23 to the k plus 1. And we know that 13 is just um, negative 22b. So that's plus 23b minus 22b. So that's equal to a times 23 to the k plus 1 plus b which shows that e to the k plus 1 does follow the same formula and therefore this is true by induction.